that's what you did. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Deacon. Happy uh, Feast of Dedication, Happy Feast of Likes. Kwame Asha'ala, may the Most High continue to bless us as a nation. Continue to nation build, continue to grow in Christ, following those laws, strictures, and commandments, living a righteous life and virtuosity between our sisters as well. Shalom. <laughs> Thou shalt have no other power before me. Thou shalt have no other powers before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that, that is in the water under the earth. Or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. For I, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. And keep my commandments. And keep my commandments. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. 
the sea and all that in them is. The sea and all that in them is. And rested the seventh day. And rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the land. That thy days may be long upon the land. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant. Nor his manservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his ox, nor his donkey. Nor his ox, nor his donkey. Nor anything that is thy neighbor. Nor anything that is thy neighbor. That's the Ten Commandments. Go ahead, sir. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Shamya Aliyah. Banya Hawada. Banya Shrav. My name means Son of the Most High. Um, tribe of well, Son of Judah, Son of Israel. I'll be reading from uh, Romans 3, 17 through 23. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear in the, of the Most High before their eyes. Now, we know that, that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them. Who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may be come guilty before a high. Shemya Ayash Allah. Ban Havada, Ban Nasrallah. My name means man of God, son of Israel, son of Judah. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Yeshua, verse 25, whom the Most High has set for forbearance of the Most High, verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and that the justifier of him which believeth believe in Isaiah. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Some y'all, the rock of war. Banya Hawada, Banya Sharala, my name means leader of light. And I'll be reading for Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? A higher forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for Christ. Shem Yah, brother Brandon, Ban Yahweh, Ban Yasharala, son of Judah, son of Israel. I'll be reading from Romans 4, 7 and 13. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the circumcision uncircumcision also. For we say faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in, in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. I shall not and he was Shemya, my God, Kayal, by Yahweh, by Asherah, a name is Shoda Valor, son of Judah, son of Israel. And we read from Romans chapter 4 and what verse? Romans chapter 4, verse 14. Romans 4, 14 from 20. Verse 14. 
For if they which are the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the law. That stands for you know, it stands for determined to know of knowledge and son of, son of Judah, nation of Israel. Starting in verse 21. And being fully persuaded that he had promised, he was able to also, he was he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his for his sake alone. That it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. And if we believe on him that raised up Yeshaya our Lord from the dead. This is the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. And not, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our heart in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. For for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But the most high Amen. Hey.
is the, the actual Sabbath lesson. Tell them to steal, because we got new people here. <laughs> so today, we have a feast day, which is called the Feast of Dedications. And we have a lesson that we've been through before, but you know, every time we do the Feast of Dedication, we want to go through it and um, give the true meaning of the winter holiday, mm -hmm. which is going to be detailed in this lesson we're going to do today. Let's jump right on into it. Let's jump right on into the lesson. Uh, so Feast of Dedication, the true winter holiday, part one. This is part one because it's a two-part series because there's a second part to the Feast of Dedication. So this feast is a uh, all week long celebration. Only on the first day, which is today, is a high holy day. And then the seventh day is the last day, which is another high holy day. So it starts on the Sabbath and it ends on the Sabbath, all right? But during the whole week, you're allowed to operate and do as you normally do your, your normal one, two, uh, Monday through Friday night, just like you would go to work and everything you were doing, but in the in, in your mind, keeping the feast day in mind during that day. Only when you come back for the next Sabbath is the law instituted. You know, no, you know, you know, going, no buying and selling, you know, you know, none of that stuff like that that you would normally do. Right. So let's jump into the feast day, the uh, feast of dedications lesson. It is that time of year of the year again when the whole world seems to be drunk on the spirit of the fall and winter pagan holidays. Mm -hmm. With very few having knowledge of what the Feast of Dedication is, and even fewer celebrating and keeping the feast, it can be a challenging, it can be a challenge not to celebrate the pagan days that the rest of the world is partaking in. Mm -hmm. Much persecution can come from family and friends for celebrating something that is so foreign and far removed from their minds. Let's take a look at the importance and significance of the Feast of Dedication with hopes that it will instill in us the same level of motivation and dedication as it did our foreparents while helping us overcome the pressure okay. of it's celebrating like the pagan days. Begin to do right. the things so and the customs of the people of the other nations that are vain to us, that are vain to our God. So it, knows how I broke it down in Deuteronomy. He said, if it, comes, if it will come to pass, you don't listen to me, you don't hearken unto me, you don't do what I tell you to do because I chose you as my people. I'm your God, you follow me, you obey me, you worship me. I chose you that all these curses are going to come. If you don't do my commandments that I command in my life, it says to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, I'm going to curse you. I'm going to curse you as a people. It says the Most High commanded Israel not to follow the way of the Gentiles. And if Israel followed the customs of the Gentiles, Curses would come upon and overtake them. In recent lessons, we have focused in on the covenant that was made between the Most High and Israel and the stiff consequences that would ensue if it was broken. Here we see wicked men of Israel not only breaking that, co that covenant with the Most High, but establishing a new covenant with the Gentiles. Yeah, forget you, Most High. Forget you, Most High. We don't want a covenant with you. You want a covenant with the Gentiles. We rather have a covenant with the other nations than have a covenant with God that chose us. That's what our ancestors That's what they're said. saying without saying it. In fact, it's more than what they said. It's what they did. Check this out. Read Leviticus. Okay. This is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18. Y'all listen to this very carefully. He says, And if ye will not, and if ye will not yet for all is hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. The curses. And that, and that just paints a much more colorful picture. Instead of saying, if you don't hearken unto me, that all these curses shall fall, you know. Punish you seven times more. Because when much is given, much is required. And, we, 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 and when those things that are required aren't met, then the punishment is more severe. Right? Finish reading the, the commentary for me. 
The reason being was because of the pressures, sorrow, and persecution that they received by not following the world. Walking in the truth, is this not something that a lot of us brothers and sisters can relate to? We can all relate to these curses. We can all relate to the persecutions that the other nations put on us. You can relate to that. But listen. How many come to this walk only to leave to go back into the world behind such pressure? It's tough. God. I mean, we got, we got shows like Good Times, Sanford and Son. Remember, remember all those old, old school shows showing black struggle? And, 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 and even during those struggles, we still show that godly form of standard. Mr. Evans and his wife, man and woman, black man, a black woman, struggling together. That, that, that show made such an impact, they had to kill James off. Right. Remember that episode? Damn, damn, damn. Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. That was to break the black family down when they, when they killed off James Evans. And to make way a new precedent, single black family with the woman playing both roles. Bishop, there was another one uh, that was good. Read. Uh, Verse 61. And they set there a garrison to keep it and fortified Ventura to preserve it, that the people might have a defense against Ayubi. Deuteronomy 28, 1 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Most High thy power, to observe and do all his commandments which I have commanded thee this day, that the Most High thy power will set thee high above all nations of the earth. The Most High shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. And the Most High shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Most High thy power giveth thee. And the Most High will establish thee and holy people unto himself. And he has sworn unto thee, and he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Most High thy power, and walk in his ways. I, I, I just got one other thing before you finish off reading. Uh, do not hold do not hold anything of materialist to your heart. Let it go because it, it, war has to change. They still look at spoils. And you don't want to be somebody who caught up there trying to hold on to something that your enemy wants because they'll kill you. So just, just let it go. It's not even worth it. Let it go because the Most High has something far greater than what you got right now. Waiting for you in the kingdom. That's for sure. Okay, now. Being outnumbered and out resourced, Judas Maccabeus, along with valiant men of Israel, stood firm and strong in battle when all odds would seem to be against them. Most people would see a situation as such and think that it would be impossible to receive victory in wars where there is such great disadvantages. This not only shows the power of the Most High, which shows the power we have in him when we come back to, to and keep the covenant that he made with our forefathers while having the faith, confidence, and belief that by doing so, he will deliver and save us in the most dire circumstances. Stay tuned for next week's part two on the Feast of Dedication as we will go into more history behind the Israelite festival as well, take a look at a deeper meaning of the feast, 
with the death and resurrection of our Savior, Yeshia. Right. Now, a, lot of, uh, a lot of what this feast has to do with has has Christ involved with how he how he completed this holy day. All right. Let us remember the dedication of our ancestors and the courage that they had while facing death, displaying great bravery and standing firm in the covenant that the Most High made with our forefathers. May you all be blessed and enjoy the true holiday of the winter season. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.
your life. Come on, y'all. We're going to do this again. He is the source.
Don't you rain down on me.